Mr. Darren Telemac, uh, Craig Max here with Daily TV. Mr. Telemac, welcome to Daily TV, sir. Well, thank you, and welcome to the Antigua Port Authority. <laughs> good, good. Uh, please tell the online world and the Instagram generations who you are and what is your involvement with the port. My name is Darwin Telemac. I am the CEO of the Antigua Port Authority. Okay. What does that actually mean? That means that uh, I am responsible for all of the components of the port, the operations, financial, human resource, uh, strategic planning, sustainability. Yeah, it's all in my head. <laughs> Excellent. Now, this was a beautiful event. It came off apparently to the naked eye without a hitch. Uh, how did it go in your own estimation? There was a major glitch. Was there? Yes. With one? What was it? So I, I, I drove home to change. Uh -huh. I ran back to my office, mm -hmm. picked up my speech, which was in a folder, okay. ran to the head table, sat down, and in two minutes when I opened the folder, it wasn't my speech. Oh, no. So I delivered what I did there in front of you. There was no written... Oh, wow. Wow. Congratulations, sir. That was excellent. Um, so I remember... So I'm, I'm from right over here in Villa. Mm -hmm. I grew up coming over here to roller skates. I remember when the port was new and there were shops and there were you restaurants. The duck pond. Duck pond with all the <laughs> lily pads and whatnot. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, but I didn't, when I left, the, you know, the Tiga and went away, uh, the port really wasn't, I, I, I don't know much about what happened to the port, but I heard it, it sort of fell into like disrepair. Is that, is that true? Well, well, ports are built in 50 year cycles. Okay. So every 50 years, you're supposed to upgrade your port. Okay. Now, in the Caribbean, all the ports that are on the ground right now, except this one, was built in the 1960s. Okay. So every port in the Caribbean is literally at its uh, wit's oh, end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, uh, some ports were probably not as uh, significantly utilized mm -hmm. as others, so they may look a little bit better, Pressure. or they could probably stand up a little bit. Yeah. But in, after 50 years, your piles are getting bad, your right. bottles are getting bad, right. your fenders are going. You have to make some changes. Right. So it was time to change. Okay. What exacerbated our change is that we had some significant deterioration of the physical infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the admin building started collapsing. Oh, my God. The sea wall started bending, and, and we saw the thinning of the of the uh, the um, sheet piles that were holding the bulkhead together. Oh. It was so bad that we that we had to do something really quickly. Wow. So this is not an aesthetic upgrade. This is not something where the government said, let's get a new thing. Uh, although the vision to have something bigger, better existed, mm -hmm. this is actually a necessity. Right. And so what ended up happening is, because we had to make our structural adjustment, we had to ensure that this was going to be fitting for the, the, the industry, the, the time as well. Mm -hmm. And, and the actual sectorial change that was emerging. Okay. Um, as we have learned, when this port was built in 1968, it was built as this beautiful facility that they celebrated like we did today. Yeah, yeah. And in 1971, the entire industry changed. So we had a port that was built to facilitate uh, break ball cargo, but now containers started coming in. Mm. Now, the difference between break ball and containers is that in brake bulk you only get pallets and boxes. Right. So there were ships that would there were little boats that would go out to the steamships. Offload. And offload out there and yeah. bring it in and lighters. Right. Yes. That's they will call. Right. That's what we built the port to do. Oh but well, we started taking containers. We had no choice. We have oh, one wow. port and in nineteen seventy one the industry said no more lighters. Wow. We're coming in with containers. Right. So wow. container ships uh, started arriving and we had to operate the port. A break ball, in a break ball, we have to operate containerization in a break ball setting, <laughs> which meant that it was inefficient, high right. risk, and very, uh, we got very low productivity from that. Oh, wow. So for 50 years, wow. we struggled with We're that. Oh, and imagine the, the economy is growing, you have yeah. more and more volumes, yeah. you're choking. As you create yeah. more volumes in small spaces, yeah. you, you highlight and increase your risk. Right. So there were always, you know, a challenge in is. sitting in that space. Oh, man. Wow. What were some of the challenges with getting the, the, the redevelopment done? Uh, first of all, you have to get the money. You have to make the case. Of course. Uh, this wasn't free money. The Chinese did not say, here, take this. Right. It took us a few years right. to prove to them that we could do this. The Prime Minister made some very interesting moves as well. 
right. uh, in, in actually saying let's reduce it. And we had some discussions on that too, so we agreed. Uh, he sanctioned it, let's reduce the amount, and then the Chinese said, let's go. Right. Then you had the obvious challenge. You have one port, and you have to rebuild that whole port. We literally rebuilt 100% of the port within wow. the port uh -huh. without losing one hour of work. I was about to ask you that. Were okay. you doing this live? Yes. Wow. We just, we just kept shifting things around. Now, oh, man. Uh, a lot of folks have been trying to understand what are the basic advantages of Antigua's port. Right. And it's one basic thing. It's location, really two. Location, mm -hmm. Rhode Island, Peninsula, mm -hmm. and the fact that we have space. Okay. If you were to visit every other island in the Caribbean, you notice that the port is sandwiched between a road and a city. It's in the city. It can't really go anywhere right. because it's they're built around Again, it. Yeah, no expansion. Right. Okay. Yes. This is a port city. It's fixed out as a peninsula. Right. We can go. We Dredge won't Bay. go into the channel. Right. But now we're going north into Dredge Bay. Dredge Bay. Right. We're going to build out a massive facility there, right. uh, which is going to be almost uh, as grand as this. Okay. Way. Okay. Uh, we're going to put in. Uh, we're going to redevelop the the harbor over there to mm -hmm. deepen it. Widen it, make it cleaner, better. Right. And um, in in doing so, what you're going to have is both sides of the harbor being fully developed. So you'd have uh, south side right. developed, north side developed, right. and um, this makes now if you were trying to do that in another island, you'd have to move a village, move a town, right. cut a road. We don't have all those problems. But we can also go further west. We can go 500 meters west. And expand the port that way. So oh, wow. literally, <laughs> if there's a, if there is an attraction uh -huh. to Antigua's port, yeah. is that it can be scaled up right. to meet the demand that you throw at it. So right. we're ready if it comes. All right. Now, what's the vision for this side? I think I heard uh, Prime Minister Gaston Brown um, talk about how maybe doing something on that side. We're not, the we're, there's no maybe. No. We, we, <laughs> we are. We, we are planning. We have actually started. We first of all. Where, where you're standing now was, was, was in the middle of the sea about four right. years ago. About reclaimed land. Right. right. And if you head back out, we, we reclaimed 13 acres of land when we dredged the harbor for the development. Mm -hmm. So we didn't throw the material away. We made land. So okay. we now have about 13 acres of land in the back here right. that we are going to develop. What, okay. we, what are we going to do there? We're going to put a mini mart. Uh, we're going to mm -hmm. put a, a huge, nice rooftop restaurant for right. someone to come in and occupy. Okay. We're going to have a gymnasium. We're going to yeah. have some uh, a, a pharmacy. Mm -hmm. A whole setup here. Okay. And then we're going to move into an amphitheater and a small uh, a small um, uh, entertainment area where you're mm -hmm. going to have a uh, food court with small restaurants mm -hmm. around there. Is that, is we're that gonna, depicted over here? Uh, no, no. I, okay. I can send you a clip of what okay. that would look like. Okay. We're going to take all the vessels that are now doing circumnavigation in, uh, with the two ships mm -hmm. on that side, they're all going to go there. Okay. We're going to take down the Montserrat Ferry Terminal because it's too close to the ships. Okay. We're going to put it here. So oh, yeah. the Barbuda Ferry and the Montserrat Ferry is going to be here. Okay. We're going to move all the fishermen at Point Wap, put them on the western side. Mm -hmm. We're going to reclaim some land further down. We're going to move West Indies oil from there, put them over here. Oh, wow. Uh, we, we're going to put a boat yard, a boat lift. We're going to have a massive operation running over What's here. What's the uh, time frame on that? Is that a 10-year, 15-year? Uh, well, we project? just got a term sheet from our investor. Mm -hmm. We have an investor as well. Okay. And um, there, there were nine items that we could have dealt with. Right. There was one he needed, to, the prime minister needed to deal with. He just gave me the green light today. So on Monday at 8 o'clock, I'll be wrapping up that document, right. sitting right. with these guys, signing it off, mm -hmm. and that uh, we could be off to the races in the early part of 2023. Okay. And be done when? Um, that size of development would probably take us about a year and a half to two years. Still, yeah. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Now, uh, in talking with some of the local folks, my family, friends who live here, one of the pain points is, so the, the port is beautiful, right? Aesthetics, the mechanics, the infrastructure is beautiful. One of the pain points is just the process. You come here and it's like the signage isn't all that great. And you go to the one line and you, you spend an hour in the line. It's like, oh, I'm in the wrong line. I got to go to this other window. What are we doing process-wise to improve that part, not just the aesthetics and the infrastructure? Uh, that's a very good question. Now, I can give you a short answer, and I, and I, all, I can give right. you the, <laughs> well, really and truly, I would like for no one to come to the port. That's what I'd like to see. Oh, yes. Go I on. think we should build out a digital platform 
and um, where you can stay home, uh, use right. your QR code, right. process your goods, right. pay, do the customers what they do, pick up. pay the port what they do. No, and we take it to your house. Oh. Why are you coming to the port? Okay. Why are you taking up your day to come do this? <laughs> I mean, okay. the, the, the idea that things must stay the way they are, uh -huh. that's not how I think. I think right. you should be you uh, revolutionary in driving the Absolutely. process. So I have, I have given the Prime Minister my commitment that in 24 months, there'll be no more paper in the port. And um, so you won't, you won't have any more documents. Right. The shipping lines are going to give you a QR code. Right. That QR code will be registered at the port. Mm -hmm. Everything you do will be on that QR code forever. So you just scan. So if you want to know what your annual import quantity is, we can pull up your QR code, download that, and we right. know what it is. Okay. If you want to know what you shipped a month ago, we can tell. <laughs> so we, but with, it's not for that purpose, though. Right. But I'm saying you're going to have a number, QR code that's yours. Yeah. You are going to be able to use that QR code to be communicated with, to be told that your goods left Miami when it did, mm -hmm. it landed in Antigua when it did, it's mm -hmm. available at the port when it's ready, mm -hmm. it's ready for customs check, you okay. can request it, you can um, approve for it to be checked, mm -hmm. and then you can make the payment by not coming here. Wow. You can then assign the trucker that you want wow. to bring it home, mm -hmm. and it comes home. If you want a drone to take it home, that probably will be available as well. We got the drone coming too. Yeah. So basically, real time status tracking, end to end, point to point. You can see where your package is, your container is. Yes. Your, now, let's yeah. go back to your initial question. Yeah. In the process of um, designing uh, a location initially, there are growing pains. Mm -hmm. And mind you, there's a saying that you can't please everyone. And that's probably <laughs> okay. true. Go ahead. Because uh, uh, a couple of years ago, a year ago, your family and friends would leave here, walk across the Dredge Bay, and pay customs over there. Okay. Come back here, get a document, mm -hmm. and go back, and then come oh back. My God. Yeah. Wow. So if they are complaining about that part, then <laughs> my goodness, that was really difficult. Uh -huh. Okay. So now they're in one space, one building. Right. There's customs. There's uh, the, the where the operations part of customs where you get your warrants. Mm -hmm. There's the tariff, mm -hmm. and then there's the port cashier. The three people you need to pay your goods, one, two, three. Right. It is correct that the pro procedure is not clear and there can be confusion. Mm -hmm. And so what, what, what I would like to do is over the next month or so mm -hmm. is to improve on that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And so we will be looking forward to enhancing the directions and the signage that we need to have there to right. make it a lot better. Beautiful. All right. Well, we look forward to that. Um, this was a beautiful event. The port looks great. The cake was great. Uh, and I thank you for your time. I look forward to talking with, with you some more on Modali TV. You just about uh, other uh, other ideas. I know you talked about maybe Antigua being going back to being the hub uh, for the Caribbean and being that central point where we can then distribute uh, goods to other islands. Uh, is that going to be a reality? Well, let me, let me let me explain to you because mm -hmm. I. I uh, you know, you're, you're, you're giving a speech and you have to rush. Yeah. But I think what, what we need to have is a real detailed lecture on what happened. Yeah. Because Liat's missing and the Caribbean is almost shut down. Yeah. You can't get from point A to point B. Yeah. And if you want to get to any one of the islands, you may have to go to Miami to get there quickly. Yeah. So essentially, what you have is the dissolution of the hub that was at VC Bird. Yeah. The dissolution of that hub is creating a difficulty to build the, the, the economy of scale in terms of passenger count mm -hmm. to make an airline viable. Yeah. Because to have any transport system, you need volumes of cargo. Yeah. If it's containers, you need a lot of them. If it's people, you need people. Right. Before the, the hub was dissolved, Leah would move people from Antigua to many different islands because they didn't have large airports. Right. As the airports increased, the numbers on Leah started reducing. Now, you didn't see it so clearly, but it became more pronounced before, just before and during and after COVID. Okay. Tourists started going direct into all these islands. Mm -hmm. And now people who would move in from Europe to Antigua, Canada to Antigua, US to Antigua, and then move on, are going straight, straight, straight on. Straight on right. So here's my point. If you are designing a strategy, a long-term right. strategy to build a transshipment uh, location, it can't just be your discussion. Mm 
-hmm. It has to be a regional understanding right. that this is what we're doing. Right. Because if you have this facility and every other government decides they're going to build a similar facility, you're going to have the, what you call the repetition of past futures. Mm -hmm. you, wow. you, you're, going, you're going to have the same thing just recurring again. Okay. And so you, 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 and then nobody wins. Right. Because in the end, it's not just you got. It's not just that you got one. The connectivity that the region needs does not emerge. Right. It ceases to exist. Right. And so the point I make is that we may be very close uh, geographically, mm -hmm. but we are far because we're not connected. Not connected. And so hubs connect people. Right. As a matter of fact, I say it differently. Hubs create regions. Okay. So when we talk about regional integration. You don't have regional integration by having a lot of islands. You have regional integration by designing a hub that supports these islands. That's right. So you have Panama Canal as a hub, Rotterdam as a hub. You have uh, Antwerp. You have so many hubs all over the place. Miami is a hub. Mm -hmm. uh, and, Big one. And yes. And LA is a hub. Right. But you don't see the other states trying to compete to be hubs. Right. Right. So essentially, we, we want to make this a hub. We're diluting. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we want to engage the other islands right. so that they too can understand this hub helps you. Right. Everybody wants to be the head. Okay. Yeah. So, but in, on that note, though, do you see other, you just mentioned a few minutes ago that pretty much every island's harbor was built in the 60s. Yeah. What, 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 if, what if the other islands go look at your beautiful sandy port and say, we want one of those? And they're doing that. That's happening. My yeah. point is, you, so you need to upgrade. Right. Maybe you don't need to upgrade to this extent. Right. Maybe what you need is a $20 million upgrade. Maybe your market size right. your, and your volumes, plus the number of calls that comes to your island, okay. it's probably not that much. So right. why do you want to build this? Why spend another $100 million Right. Now, now we, we can say that, and they'll say, well, you have one, so that's why you're saying it. <laughs> And Easy so, for you to say, right? No, exactly. Okay. So, but, but at the end of the day, right. if we are a region, this is where the strategic realignment has to take place. Right. It is a regional hub. Right. It is not just an Antigua hub. Right. It can't be because Antigua doesn't need a hub. Mm -hmm. Antigua has a port. Yes. To turn it into a hub, it has to be connected to the spokes to the other right. pieces. All right. We'll, we'll talk some more. We'll have you over Daily TV. We'll do a proper sit down interview. You can get a glass of water. We'll just chat all night. Chop it up. No problem. Craig Samuel here, Craig Max, with Daily TV, with Mr. Darwin Telemac at the grand reopening of the Deepwater Harbor. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, man. Good job. Take Thanks care. For Good night, everybody. Okay.